black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Oh, 
Florida, which is the uh, organization for the wildlife operators, and some of their four online courses and some of their books and literature to just get more from animal trapping in the wild to adapt to your house. Pack. Okay, right on. The difference of trapping a raccoon in somebody's barn to making a positive set on a house and get your soft in your 25, 30 feet off the ground with the trap upside down under the soffit and try to screw it down to back to do your side Do you ever have to like think of it or dust or prance or do any kind of like trap? Like is there any detective type style work, you know? Yeah, um, one thing that we use is like, oh, okay. uh, I use a five-point cell phone to go get the picture through your cell phone. There's other ones that uh, are low cameras that do video. And we use that. I've got three going on jobs now. We all use it to monitor. Uh, say, I've, are they coming and going here? So I'll put that camera up, and now it'll send a alert to my phone. I know it's right to them coming and going. Motion sensor. Yeah, it's motion sensor. I've used. Uh, if I suspect something's coming and going, don't really know what it is. I'll take the flower. Flower down on these cardboard. When they step through that, we do that. We uh, we, we well, do yeah. that for Santa, you know. Yeah, I can see a Santa come through. Yeah, and one time it was my damn brother. He'd been drinking. And he didn't come through. And he actually, speaking of urinating on stuff, he urinated on something. Um, what type of animal has the most sex out there? I wonder what people think. There's a lot of animals. You see a lot of animals, and you'll see them when they're chewing, but you don't hear about the sex a lot of times. Um, is there a lot of animals where animals have that? I mean. But, I mean, could you see it happening, possibly? Well, it's all in the cover of dark. I mean, they're nocturnal animals. They only come out at night, and that's something they're probably not going to do in your front yard for you. But, you know what, I like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I guess when they get into the house to mate, I guess what do people, that's well, what they'll they, be mating, the raccoon will mate, they'll mate, they won't go in the house to mate. But they mate outdoors. They'll, they'll mate somewhere, in the, you know, she comes in and she finds a suitor, and she accepts him, and they mate. Then she'll seek out a den, a place to have a baby under your house. Okay. Yeah, they don't they don't go in your house. Okay. They're going to make she's going in the house. Next time, want to buy. Wait, 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 wait
it could have rabies, it could have another disease, and then you would transmit that to the rest of the population in that area. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, if it's out there stomping its feet in a parking lot at noon, I mean, it'll be washing your damn windows at fucking 4 p.m. It's on a <laughs> not you know? around. Yeah. Raccoon. You see a raccoon at the day. daytime, that's something's wrong. That's a big sign. Uh, yeah. Dude, we used to meet up at a Michael. They had, like, Michael's Craft Store, and we'd always meet up over by Michael's, out in front of Michael's on, like, a uh, Friday or Saturday. She don't like feeling it, so, I mean, we met cruising in the parking lot, and it went from, told her, I told her that night I was going to marry her, and she just laughed at me, and here we are been married 23 years and we were together for about two years before that so she she likes it, it she's not some of the mammals are her favorite mm -hmm. and she doesn't like go on the call she'll go maybe with me check it trap she won't get out of the truck mm -hmm. uh, she i'll tell you a quick little story she i had a bunch of when we were allowed to relocate still i relo we got a 500 acre farm okay and i would let now when you say you're allowed to relocate just to clarify so i know what we're saying uh, Does that mean you're allowed to take animals and yeah, keep like them? Yeah, like if I had some raccoons, I could relocate them on an approved area. They had to be 100 plus acres and had to be landowner permission and I could release it. And so that was something that was allowed by the state, by your, my area, for your yeah. job in your area. It's yeah. no longer allowed. No, not on those certain animals or rabies vector animals. Okay. So, I mean, if I catch a groundhog, I can release it. Right. If I catch a squirrel, I can release it. But some animals you cannot. Raccoons, don't, I can't release it. Not anymore. So, anyway, so I had about six or seven raccoons, mm -hmm. and I was let, I, was, I had my wife with me, I said, will you video this, and make a good video. So I said, you video it, and I'm going to let him go. And so she's all, here he is, sitting here, and I get the trap out, and I set it down, and it runs off, and she's videoing, oh, it runs off in the woods. And I do two or three like that, and then I get one up, and I said, this one's for you, baby. I turn around, let it go, and it went right after, went right next to her feet, <laughs> scared her, her damn screaming. That was the last time she went with me when we let animals go. That'll do it, she was a little bit upset over there. <laughs> she was scared. Now, my daughter be right there. I'll bring in kit raccoons. My daughter knows she'll play with them and hold them, and she's all into animals. But it, I, I like letting them go. I mean, it was a better alternative. Yeah. I had to do what they I had to do what my the state requires me to do. Right. So some of it's not always good, but... What's an animal in? Look, you can also, you, can, you don't have to... Have you ever seen somebody that had an animal they're not supposed to have, and you let it slide? That's their business. That's their deal. Yeah, I can, I don't enforce. I don't care what. I mean, I've been to people's houses, and they've had pet deer and pet raccoons. What about something I mean, bigger than that? I mean, something bigger than that. I'm talking about. Have you ever seen anything? Mm -hmm. Somebody got a dam, and you can just blink at it if you have. I mean, animals or other stuff. Animals or other stuff. Well, I've seen a lot of other stuff. Oh yeah, I have too. I've seen full fledged meth labs. Oh hell yeah. I mean, I go into. Have you ever rescued a rat or something out of the attic of a, of a meth lab? Actually, I did a in a in a town. I named the town. Uh, I was doing a bat inspection on a, on a apartment complex. Yeah. It was a low, <laughs> low income housing apartment. It just is uh, government run. Look, if I'm on meth, dude, I promise you, I definitely think there's bats around, baby. Let's go. So I go into this place, and I'm looking. I'm, he says, well, we got, we, uh, they had a bat call. And so I'm certain they had like 18 buildings, two-story buildings. So I'm certain I'm going through the attics of all. It took all day long to, to inspect all the attics. I go to this one house, and I was like, nobody's here. This apartment. He said, oh, yeah, we hadn't got this cleared to, to rent back out yet. And I'm like, okay. And the, the guy, the maintenance guy's downstairs, and I'm walking through the structure, and I get up to the attic, and I get my ladder and open the door, and I said, well, what's with all these, what's with the white paint and all these little cards hanging? And he said, oh, that's where they, we had a meth lab up here, and they came in and decontaminated it, and they spray, um, I really don't know, if they paint, they seal everything up with like the paint, mm -hmm. that if something's in the wood, then that meth lab, it seals it up to where... It can't harm anybody. Oh, I see what you're saying. And so I go up to this attic, and it's all like this, just bright white in here, and it's got all these little these little cards hanging that's supposed to detect any type of chemical that's still lingering. Interesting. So, and I was like, okay. It's like a litmus lab. paper almost of sorts. Yeah, it's like a, it had just an indicator. If it, something detected something, it changed colors, it had a little gate meter on it. So that was, a meth lab had been cleaned up, and that was a different one. But I found full-fledged ones. I mean, I go into million-dollar homes, and I go into places that don't belong to them. But and it, every, it's everybody's house. The and if people do a meth, that's their business. You don't yeah, deal with I'm that. Not, I'm there for that. You know, people, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm here. I mean, I'm like, no, I don't. I mean, I've seen, you name it, I've seen it. Really? And I just, you know, you know when I go into the house and I'm looking for a bat, 
Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm in your kitchen. I'm going underneath your bed. Right. I'm going in your closet. I'm looking into places that usually people don't look in your house. So you probably so see some wild stuff. A lot huh? of stuff. Yeah. A lot of drug paraphernalia. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, you, see, you, you see everything. Some stuff, you know, they're like, oh, they'll get, they'll be like, oh my God, here, I'm sorry, I didn't know you'd go look here. And I'm like, dude, no, I don't care. So you ever see anybody hiding in that person's house or something like that? No, but I see where they did stuff. Yeah. You know, stuff that they don't want people to know. I go up in the attics and I find, you know, you'll find stocks, old movie books up in the attics. Oh, yeah, years ago, Old beer cans, um, uh, sex toys. Oh, yeah, and those sure. Hidden up in that. I mean, everything over, I mean, you do it long enough, you find Every, I mean, I'm underneath the houses, I'm in the attics, I'm crawling through the closets looking for stuff. You're, in the you're going to run into stuff. You're in the nooks and crannies, baby, at that and point. And some of it's kind of nasty, you yeah. know, when you're in there. I mean, do a, if, if I'm at a place doing a rat job, you know, clean, good houses, clean places can get rats. I mean, they're there for the food source, but if you have a, a dirtier environment, you're going to try more bugs, rats, mice, and it just gets... Nah. Have you been in some places that, that it gets pretty bad? T take, yeah. me on a, take me on a take me on a tail. Oh, I did a, a single wide trailer several years ago, way out in the country, rural setting, and the complaint was rats. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I got my stuff. I'll come out and do an inspection. And so I come out, and uh, they got chickens, chicken coop right in the backyard. Chickens running around right next to the trailer. Piles of crap corn feeding their chickens. They got multiple dogs outside, great big bowls full of dog food. This well. could be my sister, honestly. So <laughs> I know where the rats are going to be there. Oh, you know already where they're going to be? Well, there? I know they're there because of food source. Okay, dog right, so food, all that cracked corn. Dog food, crack, they got to have a food source. Got it. And so I go inside, and as soon as I open the door, if I see a rat, I'm Damn. And so here's this man and woman in the house, and he had two children, an older child and a younger child. And... It wasn't the cleanest of conditions, but right. I mean, I can't judge. Right. I'm Look. not there to judge how anybody is, you know, and I'm just there to do my job. So I talked to her and started investigating. It was so bad in one room that I went to a room and there was a, um, the, my generation, though, you make, when you used to have to take the top off of the suit, the suit you'd have to take the cap out or just peel yeah, up. You pull the thing. Yeah, you, pull you, the thing, the top off yeah, you had to cut the top off. When I said, why are there suit lids? nailed all around the walls on the base at the baseboard. Oh, that's where the rats chew too. And each time they chew a new hole, we we uh, nail a soup can lid over top of it. So I knew it was going to be a bad job. I mean, it was such a bad infestation that I'd catch a rat and it would get eaten before I got there. Like, it, she'd get up in the morning and check all the traps and say, okay, we got some rats. So I'd schedule it to come over there. When I would get there, I found just like the back legs and the rats. Are, the rats are, they'll cannibalize each other. Now, will they only cannibalize each other once they've been caught so they don't like give any information? Well, the other one's not going to sit still on them. Unless it dies. But I don't know what I'm saying is like, um, do the rats realize, okay, you know, Henry or whatever got caught. We gotta kill him so he doesn't tell anybody else what. So or he's, he's already dead, or here, 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 or he's food, or he's him now. So I don't know. They, I mean, it, like I said, Mother Nature's cruel. Once again, you know, it's cannibalize each other, the rats. But I mean, it's and they're there for the food source. I mean, left uncontrolled, they're getting your walls and ceilings, and you know, I think we just kicked the 30, 40 rats out of there. We got rid of all of them. Now, have you ever had anybody? I'll tell you this, I was at, this is in New York City, I'm in New York City, and I met a man from Iowa who used to, his friend sold the penis, he sold raccoon penis necklaces, <laughs> this is what the man told me right in the street, and I thought that first man was crazy, and then I got his phone number, you know, because it sounded interesting, I haven't looked at my phone in years, but I bet it's in there, is that a, do, have you ever had anybody call you and say, hey, you know, uh, Mr. Borg, will, will you help me collect some of the, you know, I'm trying to do something or I'm going into a business, you know, rabbit feet or something. Will you help me collect an item along the way? I could have brought some for you. I got a whole box of coon penises. Do you really? Exactly. Yeah. I save them every time. When I don't, the the, bur, the fur value is so bad now, the mark is just meal. And how much fur is on a raccoon penis? Well, I mean, for the staff, <laughs> the ant, the, like for the, like in the wintertime, like if I catch, for the first time, I catch a raccoon. And I'll skin, I'll skin it out and keep the fur and sell it and knock the fur off. Oh, okay. This is this getting outside the, the wildlife. This is trapped back 
that are just trapping parts, and you would you skin it out, dry it out, and sell it at auction. Well, they used to back in the seventies, you might have got thirty, forty dollars for a, a raccoon pelt. Now you oh, get, just the pelt. Yeah, just the pelt. Now you might go. Uh, last year's auction I went to, it was fifty cents up to five dollars. Yeah, so that's that's not worth my. I want. I don't spend the time to do it. Right. Know, I don't. I don't go out. It's specifically trap for them. But when I Is did do it, and when I do, if I catch one, I'll take it back and spin it out. And if it's a boar, I'll keep, I'll keep the best. I mean, they're, they're working. I mean, you can, there are guys that buy them. They make toothpicks out of them. Really? Yep. They can make toothpicks out of them. Can you pull up a picture of that, Sean? Raccoon uh, penis toothpick. And so is it, it, how much bone is on that penis? Uh, be honest. About like a pencil. I mean, you're, wow. So it's, it's, I could have brought one. You I wish we talked about that. I have brought you one. So that's raccoon penis right there. Damn, that's hardy. Yep. Coon dick toothpick. Damn. That's baculum, brother. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they're about, you can sell about every part of the animal. The skulls work. You know, in that, the guys that do it, the skulls work something. The, the glands are worth something. You know, actually, some places, I thought, I think in Louisiana, if I could sell raccoon meat. A lot of people eat raccoon. I, mean, I haven't had it. I've, I've had never it. tried. I've eaten brown hog. I've eaten uh, bobcat back straps. But I've never tried the raccoon. How's bobcat? I've had pelican and I've had dove. Yeah, I mean, the body just tastes like meat. I mean, you could, I mean, I know guys in trapping groups I'm on, they put the, they've tried the coyote back strap. But I mean, a back strap the back strap. I mean, it's all meat once you get the hide off of it. It's yeah. meat, but to each their own. We tried bobcat just for the hay. We tried it, but not something I wouldn't eat before. <laughs> we eat every day. Um, my grandparents, I used to hear my grandparents talk about eating uh, groundhogs all the time. All get that young groundhog, we'll eat that. And I've actually had groundhog years ago. It's all I like. But I know I've eaten the uh, beaver, but the, the animal. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. we go anywhere. Well, I think and, uh, <laughs> and it, it's good dark red meat. It's it's really good. You make beaver stew. Really? You know, yeah, it's a really good meat. Out of anything that, that you would trap outside okay. of the we do nuisance trapping for beaver too. Okay. But in the wind, you know, in the uh, fur trapping, mm -hmm. you know, I like beaver trapping. It, it's a good meat. It's a dark, it's a good red meat. It's a really good meat. I haven't had that, I'm sure, and I'm sure I could probably get into it in this area, you know, because uh, I spent about half the year out here now.